Let me show you the basic commands to secure your router or switch. Hi, I'm Ronnie Wong, edutainer at IT Pro TV, and I'm gonna show you what the pros know. A lot of times when setting up security for your network, you may not think about securing access to your routers and switches. Now I say that, I say it a little bit tongue in cheek, but most of us spend our time thinking about securing things like servers as well as workstations. But the idea of router security may not come to the forefront, especially secure access. So what we wanna talk about today, of course, is securing access to our routers or switches using the command line to help us out. So let me show you the commands that we need to make sure that we do. So right at the beginning here, as we do so, we're gonna take a basic router that I have set up right here and wanna go ahead and enable it by adding in, of course, a host name as well as a domain name. So the way that we do that is that we come in, we go into our global configuration mode, we type in host name, I'm simply gonna use R1 at this point, and then we'll do an IP domain dash name, and we'll just simply pick itpro.tv, okay? Now, the reason why that's important is because we need to generate a security key that is going to, well, essentially be the certificate that we're gonna use to secure access using SSH. So that's actually key for us. Now, the other thing, of course, that we need is a username and password so that somebody is able to access this router or the switch. Now, I'm actually using a router here. That's perfectly fine. So we'll set up a simple username and password database with the username Ronnie, and then we'll actually give it privilege level here, 15, and also a secret and I'll do Cisco123. Now, absolutely, your password should never be Cisco123, but for our demonstration purposes, this will actually be key. The privilege level just allows me then from connecting in from across the network, I don't have to enable or enter in an enable password to get access to be able, of course, to go into our privilege exec mode. So this is all combined into one at this point. Now that we have kind of the basics here that we need set up, we now have a user that we can configure, uh, that we can actually allow access in. We now have a configurable, a configurable device. We also want to make sure that we do a crypto key generate. So we're generating that certificate right now. And when we do so, we're gonna choose RSA, and then we're gonna tell it the size of the key that we're gonna generate. Now I'm gonna use 2048, that's the minimum that's probably recommended in today's setting. You can always generate one higher, but it may take longer depending on the processing power for your particular device here. So I'm going to press enter, and it tells me that's generating. Now because I'm on this uh, router here that's actually virtualized, well, it's probably actually gonna generate it very quickly, which it did. Notice it said about one second here was the elapsed time. Now you'll also see this message towards the bottom edge of the screen that tells you SSH5, is enabled and it tells you SSH 1.99 has been enabled as well. Well, this is actually kind of key for us. This actually means it supports not only SSH version two, but also SSH version one as well. Now, when we talk about secured access, SSH version one is one that's been compromised. So what we want to do is we want to add in a second command here that will also allow it to limit it to SSH version two. So the way that we do that is we do IP SSH version two. Oops, let me do a space here, version two. And this is important because what this now does is say, hey, let's not use SSH version one, but we'll now actually make sure that we use version two and only version two will be accepted. So much uh, more secure uh, than what we would have if we enabled both. Now we're almost done, but we are not quite. So at this point, we've got the encryption set up. We've got, of course, all the other things that we need. Now we need to say, if we're gonna connect in from across the network, well, I need to affect then our virtual teletype lines. So I'm gonna do line VTY zero space four. And then I need to tell it, I need you to use that username and password database to go ahead and check against instead. So we're gonna type in login local. And once we do that, we are close to the end here. Now. Could it actually work just like this? It'll allow for and they, uh, allowing me to access this device, but not necessarily securely. If I leave it just as is, it'll work perfectly fine, but it means I can also use Telnet, I can also use SSH. Now, Telnet is probably not something we want to be able to use if this device needs to have secured access. So the way that we limit that is we type in transport, input, and then we only limit it to SSH at this point too. All right, 
So now that we have this particular access limited and what we need, I need to take a look at, well, how am I going to access this device? Do show IP interface brief. And you'll see here's the IP address that I'm going to end up using, 10.0.12.67. I have another device on this network that I'm going to be using as well. Now, if you wanted to enable it to where you had the ability, of course, to, to make it even more secure, where you only limit the access to a certain single individual computer, you could create an access control list if you wanted to, uh, to be able to do that, or even to that one subnet, which would actually make it secure as well. But that does prevent, then, any type of remote access from if you're actually going across networks, too. So I'm not going to do that exactly yet. Now, that means I need to go to that other machine, which is going to be right over here. And I need to make sure here. So I'm going to do SSH. Then it's going to be Ronnie at 10.0.12.67. I'm going to press enter. Now it's asking, hey, are you sure that you want to actually continue? I'm just going to type in yes. And in a moment, it's now asking me for my password, which was Cisco123. And there it is. I am now actually in. I can do a show IP interface brief. And you can see it's actually that same device. So this is coming from my workstation going out to another machine, which is actually running our viral lab is what's actually running here. So you can see where we can actually do something like this to get for secure access. Now, let's test it one more time to make sure. What if I just simply said telnet to 10.0.12.67. Here, notice it tells me I am unable to connect to the remote host. So being able to do something like this is something that pros would actually use when they actually go ahead and set up, of course, well, routers at the initial configuration so they can configure it comfortably and nicely from their desk instead of having to stand there. Now, if we take a look, here's the actual commands that we did use through this entire little uh, demonstration right here for us. So now that we actually have that, remember that you can actually learn more about this as well as other things at itpro.tv. I'm Ronnie Wong, and now you know what the pros know.